Today, we're going to talk about dealing with offensive people. Now, we all have offensive people in our life, right? I mean, everybody has somebody that offends you. If you think that you're, you're really struggling to think about finding anybody that is offensive to you, I've got some bad news for you. You're the offensive one in the group, most likely, all right? Uh, so there are lots of people that are offended, and they're offended so easily. Is that not true today? We have people that are offended so easily. Uh, you say just one little thing, and they want you to get fired. They want you to be canceled. Uh, they, wanna, they want you to have harm come to you. Um, it seems like most people are more interested in yelling than listening today. Uh, I just remember when I was a kid, uh, there's bullying today, and I think social media has a lot to do with it. There's a lot of stuff on social media, especially for kids. And it just in my opinion, uh, until they get to junior high, maybe uh, more likely high school, they probably ought not to be on social media. That's just my opinion. Um, because it'll save them a lot of pain. Because when they're that age, they'll, you, know, you don't have to do it face to face. You can just get on there and like, you're ugly. Or, you know, you look stupid. And, you know, it really bothers kids. And uh, when I was a kid... You could not bully somebody unless you did it face-to-face. When I was second grade, our family moved from Elkin, North Carolina to Spartanburg, South Carolina because my dad's job. We were only there a couple years. And I'll never forget the new school that I went to. I really liked because of my teacher. Her name was Miss Vaughn. And I was in love with Miss Vaughn. In fact, I said I was going to marry Miss Vaughn, when I got up, you know, I was just a kid, had the crush on the teacher. But one of the problems in that school is we had a kid in our class, I was second grade, and I was one of the youngest kids because of my birth date. Um, I was one of the youngest kids in the class. And this young man had failed three times and was supposed to be in fifth grade, but he was still in second grade. Now, I'm not, I'm a pastor. I'm not supposed to say bad things about anybody, Right. Uh, I'll just say this, okay? I don't think you would ever hear from his mouth these words. I'll take Shakespearean literature for a thousand, Alex. That would never come out of his mouth. He failed three times, okay? And once again, I'm not mocking him, but he was a giant in the second grade, and he was a bully. And I'll never forget the first couple days there, I figured that out. He was a bully. He actually got me down pinned me to the ground and was like, you know, whipping up on me and all this stuff. And I come home complaining. And uh, my mom, you know, she would comfort me. My dad was like, you need to suck it up, boy. And I'm like, gee, thanks, dad. Um, But, you know, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, well, you figure it out. He said, he can't beat up the whole class, can he? And I'm like, well, you know, I never thought about that. You know, the whole class. And me being the budding leader that I was, uh, the next day, I got all the boys in the class together and we surrounded him and uh, we dogpiled him. And he never, ever, we didn't beat him up, we just dogpiled him. He never messed with anybody again. Well, you're going to deal with offensive people. And whether it's bullying, whether it's somebody being a jerk toward you, uh, whether it's somebody just being angry toward you, I want to challenge you to do what the Bible says. Listen to Psalm 119, verse 165. It says, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Do you want to be less offended? It amazes me the number of Christians that are like, you know, well, that movie offends me. Well, don't watch it. I mean, that's pretty simple, right? Um, You know, well, that, that show offends me. Well, this is how you solve that. Click. Right? You just change the channel, get on a different YouTube channel, uh, look at a different website. Uh, Don't be so easily offended is the point. Now, you need to learn from Jesus how to be less offended or less easily offended. And let's say there are going to be people that are offensive. You can't do anything about that. But you can control how you react. How, what do you do when you're dealing with with offensive people. Well, Jesus tells us, and it's really weird uh, the way that he dealt with this because it was not what you think. 
In fact, it's going to be probably the opposite of what we think. So let's pick up reading in Matthew chapter 5. Once again, this is from the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon ever preached, uh, the greatest sermon in history ever preached, preached by Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 through 26, it says, and this is Jesus talking, he's preaching. He said, you have heard it said to those of old, that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Pretty good, clear statement stated in the Ten Commandments. Nobody disagrees with that. You shouldn't kill people, you shouldn't murder And if you do murder, you should be held accountable. That's what Jesus is saying. You've heard it said. He said, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Wait a minute, what? Jesus just ratcheted it up. I mean, the law says everybody knows you should not murder. But Jesus says, I tell you what, if you're angry with your brother, and actually this means without cause, angry without cause, then you should also be liable to judgment. Wait a minute, what? Jesus, are you seriously saying that those who murder, physically murder somebody, and those who lose their temper are the same level of guilty? Yeah, that's what he's saying. That doesn't make any sense. He said, he even ratchets up more. All right, once again, if you're angry, he says, whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. That's the local magistrate. That's the local judge. Wait a minute. All right, Jesus, you're saying, all right, we've all heard that we shouldn't murder. Yeah, everybody agrees with that. Yay, we believe that. You should be held liable if you murder. But he says if you have uncontrolled anger or unjust anger or unprovoked anger towards somebody, you should be, you should be held accountable as well. And he takes it a step further If you insult somebody, ouch, that means I would be in prison if that was the case because I love insulting people, all right? You ever ever insult somebody? Uh, You fool, you idiot, whatever, you know, you ever just, you ever go to a store and the person that's supposed to help you doesn't have a clue where anything is? And if you're like me, it is so hard not to be a smart aleck. It is so hard not to be, um, you know, to, to respond with insults. I, I, I went to Walmart. Probably shouldn't mention that. That I went to a, an unknown, unnamed company. Uh, and uh, I asked this woman where the suitcases were. She worked at Walmart. She had the tag, the uniform and everything. And she goes, do we sell suitcases? And I'm like, you're the one that works here, not me. You're asking me? Well, Jesus said, if you insult your brother, you'll be held liable for it. Whoever says, you fool. Now, I got to be honest. That's my favorite saying when I'm driving and somebody, like, cuts me off or they're not driving the way I think they should drive. Move it, fool. Jesus is like, nope. You'll be liable. Notice how he ratchets it up. You'll be liable to hell fire. Wait a minute. Jesus, are you, you're saying, all right, if you murder somebody, you're held accountable. If you're angry with somebody, you're going to be judged. If you insult somebody, you need to go to the court. And if you call somebody a fool, you're going to go to hell. Can you get any more harsh than that? He said, so if you are offering your gift at the altar, and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. Wait a minute. Now, he's not talking about the ritual sacrifices. This is actually a a sacrifice of worship. So understand in the context what Jesus is saying. When you're in the worship service, this is what he's talking about. When you're worshiping God... And during the singing, this is not what it says, but this is the application, you remember that you have not forgiven somebody or somebody has offended you and you've not dealt with it, or you have offended somebody. He says, leave and go. And first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser. 
while you're going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Are, are you serious? I mean, we started out with murder and then you just keep ratcheting it up. Don't be angry. Don't have uncontrolled anger. Uh, don't, uh, don't hate somebody. Don't insult people. Don't call them a fool. And then if it's not reconciled, it's possible that if you leave and you don't deal with it, you might go to prison. Now, there's an explanation for all this because this makes no sense. I mean, seriously, I know Jesus said it, but if you don't understand what he was saying, you're going to miss one of the greatest opportunities to learn how to reconcile with people and understand human dynamics in relationships and how to get along with others and how to resolve conflict if you don't understand what Jesus is saying. Then he says, truly I say unto you, if you get put into prison, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. It's kind of like he's mixing metaphors um, and, and he's, he's combining two or three things here. And basically saying, if you don't get this reconciled, you might get put into prison and you're never going to get over it. Now, is that seriously? Is that what you're saying, Jesus? And I believe that his point here is that, um, that you will imprison yourself. If you do not resolve the conflict in your life and deal with offensive people biblically, you're going to live in the prison of your own resentment. Now, let's be honest. We all know people that that's where they live. They are mad about stuff. Somebody did something. Something happened that they didn't like or agree with, and they've never gotten over it. So what do you do? How do you deal with offensive people? Well, I'm going to show you what Jesus is talking about in this passage. And if you receive it, it's going to be very helpful to you. If you don't receive it, you're probably going to be like what Jesus said. You're going to continue to live in that prison of anger, that prison of hate, that prison of resentment, that prison of bitterness the rest of your life. You know, we always think that as you get older, you should get kinder and sweeter and more understanding and more wisdom. And that's true if you live the right way. But the truth is there are some people that they don't get better with age. They get more bitter with age. And don't be one of those people. And so what is Jesus talking about? How do you deal with offensive people? Well, here's the first point, And you need to remember this. Give grace. Give grace. Jesus intended to dispel the view of our own self-righteousness. If you understand what Jesus was doing here, he was saying, literally, if you're going to live by the law, then understand that the end point of everything in the law is that you go to hell. That's it. You can't possibly keep up the, the, the goodness. You're not good enough. You can't be good long enough. And we all fail. We all sin. So he says... If you want people that you're dealing with to be judged by the letter of the law, not yourself, then if you're going to apply the letter of the law to all your human relationships, then the end result is that you yourself don't get grace either. Now that's a powerful statement because we're good at that, aren't we? We want everybody else to receive the harsh judgment of God. But when it comes to our own actions, we want the grace of God. And so what Jesus was saying was very simple. You need to learn to give grace. Well, you don't understand how offensive that person was. I don't know. Maybe Jesus did understand a little bit about offense. He lived in first century Jerusalem under the harsh Roman Empire. The Pharisees and the Sadducees tried to kill him literally his entire ministry. There were people that rejected him. And in the end, he was crucified. And in the very end, every friend and family member he had rejected him, left him. I think maybe he knows a little bit about it, don't you? 
And Jesus said, we need to learn to give grace. If you don't learn to give grace, then you will live in the prison of your own bitterness. Uh, 1 John 3.15 says, anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. What does that mean? Well, he's talking about that the root cause of murder is hate and uncontrolled anger. And so when he says that we cannot keep the law, that we've broken every point of the law, understand that he includes murder in that. Because the root sin is hate and, and, and uh, unjust anger. There is a righteous anger. That phrase, being angry with his brother, is translated without a cause in some manuscripts. So he's saying, if you're angry without a cause, he's not saying that all anger is wrong. You should get angry at what's happening in the Ukraine with people dying. And you should be angry at war. You should be angry, and I'm not trying to be political about any of this. I'm just saying there are things that should make you angry. You should be angry at the number of children that get aborted every year in this country. Not angry at people, but you should get angry about stuff. There's a righteous indignation, a righteous anger. But then he goes on and says, um, don't slander. Uh, the, the term raka, which is one of the Greek words used in the passage we just read, it's a term of abuse. All right, think about that. You ever abuse somebody with your language? Well, he's saying you're guilty of murder. Not actually murdering somebody. We get that, okay? You get the, he was using hyperbole to make a point. The fact is, we should never abuse, we should never use malicious slander and insult. That's what that word means. And man, that just cuts the legs right up from under me because I love to insult people. And I try not to do it, but it's, I'm so good at it. And you know, I'm like, you know, you came to a battle of wits and you were unarmed and I'm going to put you in your place. And he says that doing that is wrong. When we slander God's created ones, now this is the point that Jesus was making. I want you to get this. When we slander God's created ones, we are slandering God himself. That's what he's saying. In other words, you're slandering God's creation. Does that mean that everybody um, is nice? No. Does that mean everybody's a Christian? No. But everybody is made in the image of God. And you have never locked eyes with another human being that Jesus did not die for. Now, does it mean everybody gets saved? Don't accuse me of universalism, of believing that everybody goes to heaven in the end. That's just simply not true according to Scripture. But everybody is in, uh, created in the image of God. And by virtue of that, we owe them respect. You say, well, what if I disagree politically? Same thing. I know how hard it is not to call... Uh, that bunch up there in our nation's capital names because they are, it's so easy to call them names. But God says, don't do that. In verse 22, Jesus was making an assertion that if you want to apply the law to those who have offended you, in all cases, that if you're true to the law, that the punishment is hell. And his point is that we all need God's grace and therefore we must offer God's grace. That's his point. Somebody that's really offensive to you, there are times that it's okay to be angry about that, but there's never a time, according to the words of Jesus, that we should not apply the grace of God. Does that mean that people that break the law should not face justice? No, that's not what he's saying. But he's saying we need to offer grace. James 3, 6, and amongst all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying that you can ruin your life with your tongue. You can ruin the lives of others with your words. So don't do it. That's what he's saying. When you call someone a fool, that is uh, what that meant was to call them stupid and godless. Stupid and godless. Man, oh man, have I broken that so many times in my life. 
But God says that when we do that, then we harbor anger in our hearts. In verse 22, uh, it means harboring anger and not letting it die and harboring a grudge. Have you ever done that? Somebody said something to you that offended you and you're just like, you hold on to it. You harbor a grudge. You don't let it go. What happens? It turns into a root of bitterness. Listen to Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. Let me ask you a question. With the way that people have treated you, talked to you, talked about you on Facebook or social media, have you developed a root of bitterness? It's easy to do. And God, you know, he's teaching us here, what Jesus is teaching, that we need to offer grace. But more than that, we need God's grace in our life. If you're struggling with that, then you know what you need? You need grace. You need more of the grace of God in your life. Uh, here's the second thing. Once you give grace, number two, you've got to admit your part in it. Now, I know that that's hard to do because most of the time we focus on what somebody said or did, and we don't ever want to acknowledge our part in it. Now, this doesn't mean that Jesus is not saying that, you know, uh, that, you know, you should be abused um, or that, you know, that there's no repercussions for that. And that's what he's saying. He's saying that if we're honest, we will admit that we had at least a little part in it most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. It's kind of like I've got two little puppies. Kim and I have two little puppies uh, at home. They're, they're English labs, and I love these little dogs. They are so wonderful and yet so full of the devil half the time. Uh, they, are, they are so fun to be around. I love to pet them. They love to be petted. But I've got one's named Coco, and she's a chocolate lab, and one's named Cookie, and she's a black lab. And Cookie is four weeks younger than Coco, and Coco's about twice the size. Coco's going to be a giant, okay? But Cookie is an instigator, okay? Uh, last night, I was sitting in the garage, you know, just uh, winding down from the day and all this, and um, Cookie would get a little toy that she knew that Coco wanted. And she would go up and literally stand right like four inches from uh, Coco's face. And when Coco went to grab it, she would turn and run. And they would run laps around the garage just trying to get after each other. Now, what am I saying? You got to learn to admit your part in it. Sometimes Coco will catch Cookie. And she'll get on top of her, and little Cookie will start yelping like she is an innocent victim. She is not an innocent victim. She is a little devil, all right? And Coco will be on top, and I'll have to stop it and so forth. But Cookie should never complain about what Coco does to her. You know why? Because she had a big part in it. You know that we're the same way? And that's, I think, what Jesus is saying. Um, we have to admit our part. Now, understand what Jesus was doing here. In the context of applying the murder commandment, he was contrasting this with the love commandment, okay? So if you understand this, you'll understand the passage a little more. He was saying that we should love God, don't murder, and we should love our neighbor as ourselves. We should reconcile, okay? So that, that's what Jesus was saying. If you want to get along and, and reconcile with diff difficult people and make it through a work day without being destroyed and coming home and being so angry that you drink a whole bottle of wine to try to calm your nerves, calm your nerves, right? Uh, the fact is you've got to learn biblically how to deal with these things. And he's saying, love God and love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbor. That's what he's saying. Verses 21 and 22 focus on the offender, while verse 23 and beyond focuses on the offended. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? The fact is, he's not suggesting that it's okay for somebody to verbally abuse you. He's saying how we react to it matters. It matters. We've got to give grace. We've got to 
admit our part. And then the third thing, and this is the hard one. We've got to ask for forgiveness. We've got to ask for forgiveness. Now, are there circumstances, cases where you are 100% innocent? Yes. But those are rare. Okay? Sometimes we forget to look at our actions and our attitude and the way we behave to elicit the response that we get toward us sometimes. And so what he's saying is this. Uh, you need to ask for forgiveness. The offering here was not the ritual offering or a sin offering, but a voluntary offering of thanksgiving and worship. And so what Jesus is saying is, unforgiving spirits hinder worship. Now I want you to let that sink in. You can come to church. You can raise your hand. You can be all getting goosebumps at the music. And I love that. And you should respond uh, if that's your personality. If you're the type that doesn't ever respond to anything, you, it's okay too. You can, you can worship God with your hands in your pocket, okay? But I noticed that there are a lot of guys especially that start out with their hands in their pocket. And then, you know, before long, they got their hands out like this. And then when they really, after they've been coming a while, they start doing this a little bit. You know, they'll raise their hands like, that's all. It's like, you know, Jesus, give me just a little bit because I can't handle any more than what I'm getting right now. And then before you know it, it's like here from the elbow. And then sometimes they get all the way in. All right. And so whatever your personality is, that's fine. But Jesus is saying this, an unforgiving spirit hinders worship. And you can be all in and not realize that you're being hindered. You see, he's coordinating, once again, the love of God and the love of your neighbor. He's tying those two things together. It's easy for us to come to church and say, oh, I love God. <clears throat> but are you loving your neighbor? You see, that is what he's showing us, that our actions matter. And once again, he's, he's comparing those two things. Um, and then the fourth thing and last thing is this. You got to give grace, remember. You got to admit your part. You got to ask for forgiveness when it's appropriate. Ask for forgiveness even when you don't feel like it. Ask for forgiveness even if you're the offended party, not the offender. Seek to reconcile that way. And the fourth thing is this reconcile when possible. Now, can we admit that it's not always possible to reconcile? All you got to do is turn on the news and see liberal side, conservative side. They, ain't not, they are not going to reconcile. And I wish they could. I wish they could actually hear each other. But they like to yell over each other and make comments that are not too smart. And so, um, but the, the point is this. God says, when possible, reconcile. Reconcile. On the way to court shows that there's a time of opportunity to reconcile and a time when it's too late. That's his point. If you wait too long, it's going to be too late. You know what the best Christian action some of you could do today when you leave church? is not going and getting in lunch line. Eat, that, that's fine. I'm not against eating lunch. I'm going to eat lunch myself. But the best thing you could do is today before you go to bed. Get on the phone, go see someone face to face, and do what Jesus said to reconcile. It may not be possible. They may not allow you to reconcile. That's okay. Make the effort. That's the point that Jesus was making. You get that off of your chest and reconcile when possible. Reconcile means to restore harmony and make peace. Now, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. You know what a peacekeeper does? They never reconcile. They allow that person to keep on doing whatever is offensive without ever confronting that. Sometimes to be a peacemaker, you got to confront in love. Okay? Um, so Jesus said, restore and make peace when possible. Uh, this passage teaches that it's not enough to control your anger, but you must not arouse anger in others. Now that cuts deep because I got to be honest. Um, I'm really, really, really good at sarcasm and cutting people down because, you know, I'm pretty quick-witted and, uh, you know, I like doing that. There are not many people that can think on their feet, 
that's what I do for a living, kind of think on my feet. And like, I'm really, 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 really good at that. And Jesus said, that's not what you're supposed to do. Don't arouse anger in others. By the way, you can do it by being passive aggressive as well. You ever watch that show, Everybody Loves Raymond? Remember that show? Remember the, the mom on that show, uh, Raymond's mom? She was one of those people that thought that she was the world's sweetest, kindest woman, and she was one of the meanest women in the world. And you know what she was? She was never direct. She was always passive aggressive. And you and I can be that way as well, being passive aggressive. Jesus said, don't do that. Uh, The word accuser there means you're an opponent, okay? Uh, So don't see the world as those that are for you and against you, okay? He said, reconcile with that. Don't, don't try to see the world that way. And then he said that we are to reconcile, and that command is given to the offended and to the innocent. If there's something you need to apologize for, do it. If there's something that you did that causes people to react the wrong way, he says, deal with it. Let them know. If you are the person that has been offended, he says, deal with it too. Don't let it turn into bitterness. Don't let it just boil in you. But he said, remember that we all need grace and that the real command for all of us is to love God with all our heart and to love our neighbor as ourself. So you want to deal with difficult people? Do it that way. And God promises. You, he doesn't promise that every relationship is going to be reconciled. Because that's just some, not, not true. Some people, it doesn't matter what you do or say or how many times you apologize. They're not going to reconcile with you. That's the truth. But you know what God says? Do your part anyway. Anyway. You know why? The person that does that, they will be released from their own prison of bitterness. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us all to learn these lessons. They're so important. God, help us to learn how to deal with difficult people your way and help us to understand that we all need the grace of God. Lord, we want you to know that we love you today. We we thank you for who you are and what you've done in our lives. And God, I pray that you just uh, be with our church today. Thank you for everybody here. Thank you for everybody joining us online. I pray that you'd bless them today. Help us all to deal with the difficult people in our lives the way that you said. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Avalon Church YouTube channel. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision of Avalon Church, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.